Heaven. Thank you, Father, for satisfying us, filling us with good things. Now take our hearts and our minds in these moments, in the name of Jesus, amen. Do you, uh, do you keep track of, like, your, your most, the top people in different categories? Like, this is the top three in this. This is the top three. I have a top three. I have the top three most beautiful women. Hey, you have, everybody has ca categories, right? Top three most beautiful women. Number one uh, is, uh, is Eve. Eve. I'm assuming, all right? I'm assuming the Bible's, the Bible's pretty clear. God, it says God formed. So I'm assuming she, he, she was the most beautiful woman. Uh, secondly, uh, in, is uh, my mom. My mom. Yeah, it's Eve and then my mom. And then your, I mean, your mom, maybe, but Eve, and then my mom. And then third, uh, four years ago, today, four years ago, this very day, I stood right about, uh, right about here and said, I do. Four years ago in the, I mean, like the exact same place on the exact same day. How cool is that? Four years ago, I said I do to the third most beautiful woman I've ever met, my wife. And so I'd like to invite her up. Hey, come. My wife can come, and uh, you can see the third most beautiful woman. The third most beautiful. And she's carrying the fourth most beautiful. So it's the fourth. Hi. The fourth or the third most beautiful woman is my wife, Melanie. Today is our anniversary, and I have my very good friend to bring some roses. Thanks, Andrew. You're a good man. All right, your Bibles. Your Bibles to Acts chapter 28, the very last story of the life of Paul that, uh, that we have in the, in the book of Acts. It closes, like the story of the early church closes with this story of Paul. And uh, it's an incredible story. So here we go. For just six verses, the first six verses of Acts chapter 28. Now, when they had escaped... Then they found that, that the island was called Malta. Okay, when they had escaped, what? Okay, rewind. Paul is on a ship, and he's a captive because, because he's an apostle, because he's a follower, a radical, extreme follower of Jesus. He is now captive, and he's on a ship headed to Rome, he uh, shared some advice in a harbor. They, they, uh, they said, no, we want to go anyway. He said, stay, no, go. So they're out there, and they hit the storm head on. The boat and all the prisoners and all the guards and all the merchandise is destroyed. Well, all the merchandise is destroyed. The prisoners are not. Every one of them make it safely to this island. Oh, it gets nasty out there. I've been by, on a boat, the island of Malta. I, I, I sailed right by it. At 14 stories up, it was a cruise ship. At 14 stories up, you could still catch the spray from the waves. Like, the Mediterranean gets, gets really turned up. So here they are. They're now on this island. They're wet, they're cold, they're hungry, and they're tired. 
But the natives, verse 2, showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on a fire, a viper came out from the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no man, this ma no doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he, he hath escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow him to live. For he shook, but, verse 5, he shook off the creature in the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down, dead. But after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said, he must be a god. Here's what's happening. Paul, as a prisoner, is, is, is shipwrecked on this island, tired, cold, hungry, and, and he's helping to build this fire. The snake comes out from the, from the sticks, bites him, and the locals, who are also warming themselves by the fire, said, oh, it's true. It's true what this man has been accused of. He is, he must be a murderer. Because although he hath escaped the sea, yet justice... The Greek goddess Dice. Yet justice has gotten him. The, the, the legend was, is that this, this goddess, the, the daughter of Jupiter, wa, was the god of justice. She, was, she hated people that did not nice things. And so she was the goddess that you could, you could appeal to if somebody wronged you because she, she just hated people that wronged other people. And so she would, she would catch, she would, she, would, she would punish people that were bad people using the sea. And the legend was that once a man had outdone the goddess Dice. He had done something wrong and he had, he had fled and she had, uh, he was on a ship, he had, uh, she had tried to get him on the ship. He escaped and he crawled up on a, on a sandy shore and was laying there, totally fatigued, tired, worn out. And while he lay there, a snake came and bit him and he died. And so they said, we know, we know this scenario. You can escape the sea, but Dice will always get you. So here Paul is, falsely accused by everyone. Let's check this story out. Verse 2. The natives showed us unusual kindness. For they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. Okay, think of, think of like a bad day. A bad day. Okay, things didn't go well with your friend. You had a little conversation. Uh, your parents, your school, your job, whatever it is, it's all kind of just piled up. Here is a man where it's all piled up, a follower of the Christ. He's a prisoner. Why? Because he, he, was, he was totally sold out and would not give up or give in for the sake of Jesus. And now he's a prisoner. He's being taken to Rome where he, he knows he'll meet his end. His advice, his advice was ignored. And now they are shipwrecked and they have, they're, they're hungry and they're shipwrecked on this island and now they're tired and now the rain is coming down so they're wet, they're cold. They're, what else could go wrong in someone's life? You are alone. You're falsely accused. You're wet, cold, tired. Nobody's listening to you. Like if we want to make up a scenario, this is a bad day, those would be it. And we've got to set the picture here. This is a bad day because what happens next is exactly... Uh, is exactly where we will find ourselves, the, the point of decision we will find ourselves in. Here it is, verse 3. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire. This is a man that's having a very bad day. Have we heard that before? A bad day. But he's still working for the benefit of others. 
He's not given up. He's not stopped serving. He's not stopped loving other people. So he's gathering a bundle of sticks. And he was laying them on the fire and a viper, a poisonous serpent came out of the sticks because of the heat and fastened on his arm. The man is having a bad day. But he, he, he's made the decision. I'm sure he didn't feel like, this wasn't some Paul, superhero Paul. This was Paul, a normal person. But he's continuing to serve. And as he continues to serve and to love other people, here comes this serpent suddenly biting him. A poisonous serpent fastened on his hand. The, the, the snake is hanging there. came out suddenly. It adds to, to the day he's been having. Now comes this. At what point can we give Paul a pass and say, go ahead, Paul, just, just yell out, just respond, just react, just cry out, just argue back, just, you, you deserve it, Paul. There is something about suddenly, there is something about suddenly that reveals who we are. Okay, put yourself in, in this situation. You are having a bad day. You had an argument. Let's, let's go, let's like make a really bad day. You lost a relationship. You lost your job. And uh, you lost a bunch of money. Uh, it was stolen from you by your best friend. So now you've lost your best friend. Uh, okay, there's our bad day. Oh, and you're just about to lose your car. I mean, it's like rattling. like. So you're just about to lose your car, but you're driving that car. And you're at the t breaking point, the tip. Ugh. But you're still driving to, uh, to help somebody. You're, you're still deciding, I'm going to do it. And then somebody pulls out in front of you, and you're the last car in a long line of cars, and there's nobody behind you. They could have waited. But they whip out in front of you. Suddenly, what do you do? What happens suddenly very often opens up our heart and says, this is who I am. When you want to find, uh, you have rats in your basement. Let's say you have... Uh, some rodents in your base. You've, you, don't, you haven't seen the rodents, but, but you've seen signs of them. They've chewed up some boxes, left the little turds, and it's just, you, you know that they're there. You want to, though, identify what exactly is it that's eating it? I mean, what exactly is down there? And so one day, you open that basement door, and A, you quietly tiptoe to the bottom of the stairs, and then suddenly flip on the lights. Or B, you open the closet or open the basement door, slam it against the wall, march down the steps. Oh, you flip on the light at the top, then you march down the steps, you get to the bottom where the basement is, and you see what? You won't see any rats. There is something about the suddenly that reveals the rats. We don't like that. So when somebody says something to us, when somebody interjects something, we use this line, which is 
hellish. You make me mad. You make me mad. It doesn't even make sense. You make me mad. That says, this is not my responsibility. This is your responsibility. You're the problem and I'm not. That's what I mean. It's hellish. It, it communicates the responsibility there and not here. So when somebody says something, oh, she makes me so mad when she does that. Oh, he makes me so mad when he says that. No, they don't make you. I can't make you. She can't make you. Your, your, he can't make you. We can only reveal that, in fact, you are a mad man. You are a mad woman. If suddenly, suddenly something, somebody does something, somebody says something, and, and you get angry, they can't make you mad. It only opens your heart and it says, this is what's inside. So suddenly the serpent comes out, bites Paul. This is what we wanted to see. This is, Paul, this is what we want to see. This is what we want to know. Who are you, Paul? When, it's, when you're at the breaking point and the breaking point happens, well, how, do you, how do you go from there? How do you go from there? And the very next verse, Paul has to, has to make a decision. He makes a decision, guys. Listen, this is not Paul, some autopilot apostle guy. This is Paul, the real life man who was like us, who had to make decisions to be a radical follower of Jesus, to be, to be faithful, to put his faith in Christ. This was Paul. I'll never forget, I was in, uh, I was in uh, Honduras. I, I I graduated with my, with my undergrad, with my bachelor's degree at the University of Montemorelos. But this was prior to, to learning and studying in Mexico and learning Spanish. So I'm, I'm in Honduras doing a mission trip, and I'm preaching my heart out. And uh, one day the pastor said, hey, why don't uh, we want to take you to an iguana farm? Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm by myself preaching this series, so I'm, I'm ready to go home. It's hot. I, I'm, I'm tired of being hot. I'm tired of being just alone in this world because I can't understand anything they're, they're saying. I, I don't get it. I just want some other food. I, then he, the pastor says, hey, we're going to take you to an iguana farm. So pastor and his wife, they get a little two-door car, and I'm in the back with their three-year-old. All right? And I learned, I had learned one word from this three-year-old in the time I had been there. <clears throat> and, and the word was Mia. Everything was mine. That was, that was her. Mine. This is mine, 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 mine. Everything. Mine. So we're sitting in this back seat, and, I, and I'm acting like a child because we're like, that's the line. We're going down this dusty or dirt road. Dust is just flying everywhere. There's no AC in the car, so the windows are down. This dear pastor and his wife, love him to death, but we're driving down to see iguanas. All right? All farm of them, like they're in the trees, running around the grass. We're driving down this dirt road, and I'm tired, and, the, and I'm annoyed, and I'm sweating, and the dust is sticking to my sweat, and I just want to go home and... And I just want to be at my home. And, uh, and the person in front of me, windows are down, the person in front of me <clears throat> clears their throat. <clears throat> and spits. Yeah. That's all right. Spits. <laughs> then it stops. Turns around. <laughs> right back in. Right. Drip. <laughs> and now I had been at the breaking point. And I said, this is too much. This is too much, God. And you know what he said? In a flash, he said, Michael, you have a decision. 
Okay, good, good. Give me A and B because I know A, you're sitting in the back of the car with a naughty little three-year-old and you have someone else's saliva dripping off your face. All right, that's option A. And you're upset about it. Good, all right. Option B, you're sitting in the back of a little car in another country with a naughty little three-year-old and somebody else's saliva dripping off your face and you are okay. Really? That's all. Yeah, God says, I'm not going to, like, do this pretty little picture for you. And No. You're living life. But you can be okay. I will stick by you. You can make the decision to be okay. Hey, I will still be faithful to the task God has called me to be and to do. And there's the Apostle Paul at the breaking point. The snake is hanging off of his arm. And the, verse 4, the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand. They said, yep, D says got him. Justice will not allow him to live. But he, verse 5, this is beautiful. Verse 5, but he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. But he, at his breaking point, he shook off the creature and suffered no harm. We're at our breaking point. Do you know what the, do you know what through all of scripture the serpent represents sin and Satan. Even when when the serpent represented Jesus on the cross, it represented there was a serpent like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness on that cross because Jesus was to become sin for us. Sin is and Satan is represented by the serpent throughout scripture. And here comes a deadly serpent at Paul, at arguably Paul's weakest moment. The man is hungry, tired, and cold. Okay, men, there is a lot that that, that, that can go on, that we can handle in the world when we are not tired or hungry. There's, there's a lot. Come on, give it to me. Just feed me first, give me a little nap, and I'm good. No, it's, it's true. A man though, that is wet and tired and cold and hungry and, and been ignored. That man is standing there now and Satan says at his weakest moment, at his weakest moment, I'll get him. And the serpent is hanging off of Paul's arm and he what? He shakes it off. Hallelujah. He shakes him off. And he shakes him where? You can't miss this. Paul, in his weakest, in, in probably his most vulnerable moment, Satan says, that's the moment I'm going to attack. I haven't been able to get this, this follower of the Christ, the faith man, the man who, would, who, would, who is willing to give everything now for the sake of the gospel. Now, at his weak moment, at his vulnerable moment, though, I will get him. And I'll get him suddenly. He won't see it coming. And the serpent's hanging there. And Paul shakes him off. Listen to me. There's a lot of things that we need to shake off. There's a lot that we're having. Look at, look at, look at, look at. I need, I need, I need time to deal with this. So I need, I need, I need like a 12 step. And I'm not, hey, take, if you need classes and you, and you need programs, that's fine. But sometimes we're using those as crutches not to shake something off. Hey, I mean, I need, I need, I need to like genuinely process, I need to like process this thing. You don't. 
And, and, and when it's temptation, you don't have to flirt with, you don't have to hang around. Shake it off. You're, you're, somebody's giving you something, you're at your breaking point, and somebody's giving you, you just shake it off. You're, you're beat down, and you're saying, everything's gone wrong, and then suddenly, shake it off. Do it. Do it physically. You just remind yourself in those moments, you just, duh. Up. Now it doesn't work if your friend is here and then you do it because it just complicates the situation when you're like, Ugh. you're like, uh uh, no, you didn't. You didn't just shake it off. Shake it off on the phone. Shake it off. Here's, we play with it though. We play with it. Oh, God, it's happened to me. Paul shook it off. And where did he shake it? He shook it into the fire. You've got, to, you've got to remember this part. He shakes it into the fire. Listen to me. When that serpent is hanging on your arm, he likes to use some favorite phrases. He'll catch you at your weak, your vulnerable moment. And he'll say something like this. What's wrong with it anyway? You never say that about something that's good. 100% of the time, it's wrong if the question comes to your mind, what's wrong with it anyway? It's not like you, you're, you're, you're deciding, should I eat fried food or fresh broccoli? What's wrong with eating fresh broccoli anyway? You, it, 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 it never happens, all right? You just don't say it. Because it's, it's obvious what is right. The other line is, everybody else is doing it. You never use that line for something that's good. You know... I think I'm going to read my Bible and pray because everyone else is doing it. It's, 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 it, it, it's never, if you ask one of those two questions, it's wrong. Try it. Test it out. You'll see it. You'll hear that whisper. Come on. What's wrong with it anyway? Shake it off. Come on. Everybody's doing it. Shake it off. Verse 6, so they were watching. They were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall dead. The people around us think that we're down. But after they looked for a long time and saw that no harm had come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. <laughs> no, you, you, can only be a, you can only defeat the goddess Dise if you are, in fact, too, also a god. But moving beyond that and, 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 and their, their misconceptions, if we, at our breaking point, remain faithful to Jesus, it will be our greatest testimony, beloved. If we, in the most difficult time of our life, remain faithful to Jesus, then others who are watching our situation, oh, no, he is, she is really that. When you say, I am a Christian, I am a follower of Jesus, and then in your weakest moment you stay faithful, people will change their minds about you. They said, oh, we thought you, you would give in. We thought you would give up. We thought you would, but now we know you are a Christian. This has bigger implications than just for our everyday life. This has, this has apocalyptic, this is, this is the great controversy played out in your life and mine tonight. Tonight at your breaking point or tomorrow or this week or this semester, at that moment when the devil comes out of the wood and hangs onto your arm and, 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 and in that second you're watching him hang, that is the great controversy played out. Do you remember 
Do you remember what God did to Satan? There was war in heaven, says Revelation. Michael and his angels fought, and the dragon and his angels fought. But there was no place found for them anymore in heaven. And so they were cast out or cast down to the earth. Do you remember this? So here, Satan is now cast down to the earth. He is now dwelling on the earth. And his, the only way he can be elevated, the only way he can get up or, or rise higher, which is his ultimate goal. He wants to ascend, Isaiah says. I want to ascend. His only way, his only way up is to use us. And so he latches on. He says, lift me up. Come on, give me a lift, buddy. Come on, come on. There you go. He latches on. And then we're confronted with the decision, what do I do with this snake hanging onto my arm? What do I do? Paul is standing there. <laughs> what do I do with this snake that's hanging onto my arm? The devil has been cast down to the earth. Watch this. Paul, seeing the creature, shakes it off into the what? Into the what? Into the fire. Paul doesn't shake the serpent back to the earth from whence it came. He shakes it off into the fire. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10. And the serpent at the very end of the age will be cast into the lake of fire. And at every moment, at every decision, at every time that we're making the decision that we are, are shaking Satan off, every time, every day, the hundreds and the thousands of us followers of the Christ do it. We are reminding Satan, what his destination is. Shake him off. The only way he can be elevated is if you hold him. Shake him off. Paul's story, Paul's life, the last story in the book of Acts is a picture of how your life fits into the great controversy. Satan has been cast down to the earth. The only way up is through you. And so he's looking for you. He's waiting. He's got time. He, not tonight. Nope, nope, nope. They're too, they're too focused on Jesus. But tomorrow morning. Nope, not tomorrow morning. Tomorrow afternoon when they've had that conversation, when they've had that phone call, when they've had, tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to be there for her or be there for him. And I'm going to come out suddenly, suddenly. He doesn't, he doesn't send the postcard. Suddenly, he's hanging on your arm, and in that split second, your decision is, what do I do with the snake hanging on my arm? And the Bible says, Paul shook the creature off into the fire. Satan's final place in this great controversy. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10 says that's where he's headed. You know what that says to me? Is that the decision that I make, the decisions that we make, when temptation confronts us, really does matter. The moment that suddenly comes out, and I have a right to be angry. Did Paul have a right to be angry? Absolutely. Come on, Paul, just get mad for our sake. No, he said, I'm, I'm going to stay faithful to Jesus. I'm going to stay faithful to Jesus. Come on, Paul, get mad. Let. Nope, I'm not going to give Satan a bit of space in my life. He's been cast to the earth. His final place is, is fire. I'm going to remind him where he's going. Paul shook off the creature, guys. Let's not play around with it. Let's not flirt or hang around temptation. Let's not dwell 
Let's shake it off. This was Paul. You remember Paul? Paul, come here. You're preaching about the Christ. We're going to kill you. We're going to beat you up, they said first. They brought him in the council, the leaders. We're going we're gonna to beat you up, Paul. He came in. Okay, you're going to beat me up? That's a promotion. If I'm beat up for the sake of Jesus, that's a promotion. Freaked them out. Uh, come here, guys. We can't, we can't give him any promotions. What are we going to do? Let's let him go. So they let him go. Paul, but, but be warned, we'll come after you. Thanks, guys. Paul went back out following and preaching the Christ. They drug him back in. Paul, we warned you we'd beat you up, and we're serious. Now we're not even joking about beating you up. We'll kill you, Paul, if you don't quit preaching about Jesus. What did Paul say? To die for my Lord would be an honor. Their eyes were all googly. What? We can't honor him. He couldn't touch Paul. Why? Because anything they would do to him for the cause of Jesus was all right with Paul. The man said, I will stay faithful to Jesus in every aspect of my life. And when I'm at my breaking point, and when I'm at my breaking point, and I have every reason and excuse in the book to react and to give in. I'll still be faithful. There's going to come a night if it isn't tonight. There's going to come a day if it isn't today. But there's going to come a moment in your life when you are standing where Paul was standing beside the fire. You have been only doing what is right and what is best. And it still feels, it still seems, it still, it, from, from, even, from even the perspective of others, you are forsaken and abandoned by God himself. And your breaking point will be there. And Satan will say, this is my one chance. I'll get her. I'll take him out. This is it. And the serpent will come up suddenly and he'll bite you. And you will find yourself with every excuse, every human excuse. What are you going to do? What are you going to do.